supposed to be the best piece of government in the history of the state of Georgia? Here at the table is great. Test, is that? <laughs> Test, there we go, that'll work. All right, um, <clears throat> for members of the committee, we've got um, House Bill 642. Uh, Chairman Nimmer, and we've got a sign-up sheet over here. We're going to limit it testimony based on what's going on in other committees and things of this nature and try to make it as uh, as full of substance as possible. So if you'll tell us the LC you're working on, we'll, we'll get to work. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, uh, House Bill 642, uh, if you'll look in the top right-hand corner, LC 288760ERS. That is LC 288760ERS. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I apologize to you while I was sitting here. They're calling me from the Ways and Means Committee. They're, they're actually holding the committee meeting for me to present a bill, so your members are there. And I'm here. <laughs> so, which, which, in, which increases the likelihood yours passes. <laughs> well, I, I, anyway, I apologize. No, no, no. For the inconvenience and the overlap of schedule. I appreciate the opportunity to be before you and your committee. Uh, to take into under consideration and hopefully for a vote today, uh, House Bill 642, uh, better known in, in, in the way I kind of reference this bill is a Beltline measure. It's a Beltline bill dealing with the Atlanta Beltline here in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Many of you are familiar with the Beltline and its great benefit that this, this had not only to the city and the surrounding cities, but to the state of Georgia as a whole, somewhere around $4.1 billion economic impact that's been recognized off of the Beltline and the industries and, and retail that has come along with it. Um, what we seek to do, Mr. Chairman and members, is under House Bill 642 is create a, a CID. Uh, that is a special improvement district. Uh, what that would do is basically create, if passed under the uh, provisions that I'll walk through in a minute, in, in just a moment, uh, the ability for a, a community, if you will, that special improvement district, uh, to self-tax, to raise their own money <coughs> for the uh, improvements and further construction of the Beltline and hopefully uh, complete that project. Uh, I do want to share with you, before we get into the bill, Mr. Chairman, uh, the Atlanta Beltline, as I mentioned, has had around a $4.1 billion impact. Uh, last year alone, 1.8 million people visited.
big move for the state of Georgia to give this latitude to the people of the Beltline and, the, and, the, and again, the taxpayers in the district. This is the people on the outside dictating to anyone on the inside uh, a, a, the opportunity for a tax increase. This is the actual people who will be paying the tax that will be voting on whether or not to give themselves up to a two and a half million increase. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Nimmer. We're going to ask a few questions. Uh, Chairman Taylor. So, um, and <clears throat> excuse me, um, then SID, can you kind of just go in? Um, I've got a, the perimeter CID in my district, which is, you know, self-taxing district. But uh, can you kind of get a, and that might go to Jill or, or Parsi, uh, possibly Marcy, uh, just the technical differences between that? <coughs> Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Jill Johnson. I'm the Government Affairs Director with Atlanta Beltline, Inc. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, this bill is a product of several years of discussion between property owners, commercial property owners, and multifamily residential property owners around the Beltline. They were excited about the success of the Atlanta Beltline today. It's been a transformative project for the city. It's taking 22 miles of former railroad corridor that circles and touches 45 neighborhoods in the city um, that's been underutilized and abandoned in some places and returning it back to life. It's building a multi-use trail, uh, new parks and green space for communities to enjoy, as well as in the future transit. Um, it's brought an enormous amount of economic development as uh, Chair, as uh, Chairman Representative Nimmer has described, um, the difference between a CID and an SID actually goes to the beginning of the discussions. Um, originally, the property owners looked at a community improvement district, but resi multifamily residential properties are not allowed to participate in one. So a special improvement district is simply a newly created version of a special services district that is allowed under state law that in which you can have that parity. So both the multifamily residential parcels as well as the commercial parcels that are benefiting from the Beltline and have talked about how do we invest further in the Beltline to accelerate the construction of the remaining Beltline Trail. This was the model that they came to. A special improvement district, again, is just a newly created version of a special services All district. Right, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. I mean, just to, to distill it down, basically, the CID, like I have in my district, is, is no residential. It's just all businesses that self-tax. This just includes multifamily or single-family residences uh, in that district as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. All right. Other questions from members of the committee? 27. Who, who do we? Representative Black. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask Representative Nimmer if he said he visited the Beltline. Was that in a jogging capacity or walking capacity or are you? Being pushed in a special uh, cart. <laughs> 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 I didn't notice that you've been jogging any lately, so I, did, I just wondered. Uh, tell me, tell me where there, Mr. Representative. Great bill, thank you. I think it, a Beltline is a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. For, Shaw's for agreed area. to join us at 4:30, so we're not waiting on you. Uh, any any other questions from members of the committee? At the appropriate time. Representative Mosby. 13. It wouldn't light up. Is it this? About 14. Because I can move. Oh. If I didn't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where's the city of Atlanta on this legislation? I, I don't know. I haven't talked to the mayor or any of the council on this. Uh, th this, was, this was basically inside for just the residents. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm assuming we got somebody in the audience that can give us some uh, input on that specific question. So identify yourself and with that short yes or no. Good, good morning, Mr. Hey. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Robert Highsmith with Holland yeah. and Knight representing the City of Atlanta. Uh, yes, uh, Representative Mosby, the City of Atlanta is fully aware of the legislation and that supports the Beltline's efforts. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Robert. Other questions? All right, I know we had some pushback early on from the Apartment Association. Raise your hand if you're out there from the Apartment Association. Yes, sir. Hayden Stanley on behalf of the Apartment Association. Uh, we appreciate the committee's uh, time to, to uh, get comfortable with this. We've worked closely with the Beltline. 
other advocates and the sponsor. Uh, we are supportive of this. We think that it is properly limited in a way uh, <laughs> that it is not going to be misused. So Very good. We support the bill. And um, Jill, you still here? She's hiding. Anything else you wanted to add? I think you had signed up to speak. No, sir. I do want to recognize we do have two members of the steering committee with us today here, um, Mr. John Lundeen with Coro Realty and Mr. Matt Rendell with Sea League Enterprises, if you just want to identify yourself. Thank you all for being here. These gentlemen are, have taken part in conversations over the last several years to get us to the consensus that we're at today. At this time, the chair will uh, entertain the proper motion. <laughs> Got a motion to do pass? I will, I will second as long as you're not going to log around the belt line. <laughs> I like it. Got a motion to uh, do pass in a second. Any discussion? Great. All of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Like sign if you're opposed. Great. Um, House Bill 642 passes. Thank you, Chairman Nimmer. I just had a, someone ask, so I know one size doesn't fit off for the Greenhaven folks. If you're just learning about government affairs, want to be here and watch, you're welcome. If you're asking, is a bill going to be heard and you want input, which one is it? <laughs> yes, ma'am, it's not. I just, for congestion purposes or whatever, I want to give you that courtesy and not keep you here all day for nothing. So <laughs> thank you so much. All right, um, Chairman, um, Representative Luricia, we got. House Bill 899. Did we get a substitute on that? Yes, sir. We have an LC number that's good. Yeah, that bad boy did grow a little bit, didn't it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Yeah, this is House Bill 899. The LC number is 363591S. And so, uh, but no, I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to present this bill and uh, just kind of give you a, as quickly as possible sort of some history on how this came up. We uh, run a study committee over the summer uh, to look at the, the different delivery methods that we have on some of our capital outlay projects at the state and local levels and the delivery methods that you're probably familiar with is like design bid build construction management construction management at risk design build construction there's four or five you know different delivery methods and as we had these study committees um, we were hearing from small medium and large general contractors and and uh, all of them would agree that uh, in some of the RFPs or RFQs the request for proposals or requests for qualifications uh, they were being disqualified simply because they did not have experience in a specific delivery method. Um, in the cases that we heard, it was most often the construction management at risk delivery method that they did not have experience in, even though they had built, say, a number of schools uh, under design bid build, they had never built a school under the delivery method of construction management at risk. So what this bill simply does, and it's in two different titles because one is state and one is local, and you'll see in the Title 13, which is the Georgia, and then the Title 36 is local governments. What this does is adds a line on in each of those titles that just simply says, you can't be disqualified simply because you have not performed a project under that specific delivery method. Now, obviously, you have to have experience, licensed, bonded, experience in similar size projects, um, but you haven't done the job, but you can't get the job because you haven't done the job. No, yes. Mr. Chairman. I, I, <laughs> That's the current current situation says unless you've done this. That's right. You can't do this. That's right. That's so right. So since you can't ever do it, you won't ever get to no, do it. You won't ever get to do it. That's right. So you have me thrown off there just to, which you do that every day up here. <laughs> well, we call it logic. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and, I, and I do want to say this, the Association of General Contractors, all of the general contractors and construction management firms, the design professionals, um, and owners, uh, Georgia State Finance and Investment Commission, the uh, 
Board of Regents, uh, the, the uh, Department of Education. Uh, this comes uh, from a, the final report and recommendations from that study committee. And so I thought uh, trying to, to be a good uh, uh, chairman of that study committee and legislator, we would start with the, the low-hanging fruit and the things that we could all agree on, and then Mark and I will start fighting in a few years. I'm just kidding, Mark. Okay. Uh, questions from members of the committee. Chairman Taylor. Real quick, uh, Dom. The, um, so basically, we're just, you know, we're, we're eliminating people being excluded because they haven't performed a particular type of contract, like schools or whatever. Say if I have a friend who builds banks and credit unions and builds big buildings, uh, he would be eliminated from or excluded from building schools just because he hadn't built a school before. And this is opening that free market process up well, is what he, we're talking he, about. He, he probably would not have been disqualified simply because he had not built a school. He would be disqualified under those RFPs and RFQs because he had never delivered a project under that delivery method. Okay. So you could build a, a bank and a big building and a school, but you just had never performed a project under that particular delivery method. I've got you. So it, we're just opening up the market. Yeah, that's right. Good. Just kind of let, you know, making sure that everybody gets a fair opportunity to at least make a proposal and, and sit down at the table and, and give their uh, reasons for why they think they can do it. Gotcha. Good, Bill. Representative time, Oliver. Did you mention a study committee? I'm sorry, I didn't. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. We did. It was. What's, uh, who's we? Uh, the House passed a resolution last session that was on construction management uh, delivery methods or the construction management um, study committee is what they called it. And uh, we met five times over the summer. Uh, we were getting some concerns by uh, particularly the smaller general contractors that they were not able to have opportunities to uh, propose for schools, facilities, buildings, renovations on college campuses because they were being let for, um, the project was being let under the construction management at risk delivery method. And one of the first documents that comes out is a request for proposal. And in those requests for proposals, it would say something like, if you've, n if you've never performed a construction management at risk project, and then you know, you've got to have done two or three of these. And then when you start to score them and break down the most qualified, they would score them again based on their experience under that delivery method. And almost immediately, but not in all cases, but almost immediately disqualifying those smaller guys, and in some cases large guys, and we've got some examples of the big guys that had just never performed under that delivery method. Uh, usually when we have a bill like this, the ACCG and state of Georgia has been involved because it's right. kind of a litigation prone area. That's right. Is, is everybody on well, board Well, we just spoke this? with Todd. Is he, in, yeah. is he still in? Yeah. Everybody's on board on this. This doesn't come out of a specific litigation, specific case? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No opposition. Representative Shannon. I'm okay. Uh, Representative LaRocca just answered my question, so. Right. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you so much. Anybody else uh, sign up to speak on the bill? Mr. Woodall. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Mark Woodall. Uh, represent Associated General Contractors. We're the oldest, largest statewide trade association representing commercial builders and construction-related firms. We, we participated in all the study committee hearings over the summer. And to give a little background, we, we represent from the largest of the large uh, down to the very small family-run businesses. And so sometimes it's tough to keep all the family happy. Um, but um, one of the things that was a consistent uh, uh, position from the organization, in the public arena, we very strongly believe that it has to be publicly advertised, competitively awarded, and allow uh, qualified firms entrance into the market and so what some of these RFQs and RFPs would say in order to be eligible to submit you had to have done three or more projects of this size or greater under this delivery method so mr. chairman if you never have you never will and so attempting to say you ought not be excluded if you've been a tremendous school builder under a particular um, project delivery me uh, method but not specifically this one 
you're certainly qualified. You got a great track of record. You've got the bonding. You got the license. You ought not be excluded simply because you haven't had that opportunity. And even the folks that are doing it now, at one point in time, they hadn't done their first one either. So we think this is a good piece of legislation. A bill you passed out of this committee last week dealt with advertisement that also helps small businesses gain access to the market. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Great. At this time. Representative Price. Uh, is there a definition of, of uh, delivery method? I'm sure there is, and Mr. Woodall would be glad to give that to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I don't think it's specifically statutorily defined. We, we basically, in our public works law, you can award a, a contract under competitive sealed bid, where lowest responsive and responsible bid is the basis of award, or a competitive seal proposal, and then the owner has the discretion of determining what the criteria are under the proposal. Price could be one, but so could past performance, experience under delivery method, on and on and on. So one is by price, and the other one is based on price and other factors. Chairman Taylor. One, uh, just a, a statement, then I'll make a motion. The, um, you know, working in the defense industry most of my career uh, after retirement from the, the military, you know, it's just like if you haven't built a, built a space shuttle before, you can't bid, you can't bid to build you know, the space shuttle or the next rocket. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, we just need to open up the market. And with that, I will make a move to uh, do pass. All right. Any space shuttle rocket builders opposed to his motion? <laughs> Let's hear it. I, I moved to the <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that, but uh, I'm hoping they're not trying to announce that you're going to build a space shuttle. Yeah, right. Uh, no. Got a motion from Representative Chairman Taylor, second from Ch Representative Williams. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, like sign. Uh, it passes. Congratulations. I, I want to mention some things to the committee. We have been signed a lot of different bills. I'm letting you right now know. I think Tuesday is a, an open day. I anticipate that we will have a governmental affairs meeting that could get could get lengthy if the Greenhaven people do not, if they can come up with some kind of um, reasonable situation, we may actually hear some of that, but uh, it may not. It's not necessarily a promise, but it, I understand there's some discussions going on right now, and that's been a big piece that's, that's kind of hanging up there. Ma'am? What was the date? Next Tuesday. Uh, yeah, and I, I haven't done that on time yet. We're going to look at some other committees that are meeting on that particular date because of crossover, so we're getting some stuff late. That's why we went to full today and we had to wait a little bit on some folks in the interest of time. But with that said, we had a second bill, House Bill 961, Representative Hansen. Um, that should be, and we're gonna get that out to you. Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you and your committee, I have Commissioner Nancy Jester coming up here with me. Just, yes, um, give us just a second to make sure everybody does it and the chairman can get a water. Anybody else need water? Is this in our folder? It, it's I'm being passed out late. This was a late one. And I think in the interest because it's, it's very rare, this come up late. So I'm going to give members of the committee time to look at this, formulate some questions. This is, this is one we may not have had before. And so I'm going to just give you all a few minutes to, to take a look at it. And it has not gone to subcommittee. And it eliminates the CEO form of the CAD County before they jumped out and did that. I'm sorry, what, what number represents all of I'm 25. 25. Just, is that what it does? Mm -hmm. Eliminates the entire CEO form of government. And uh, DeKalb County, uh, other commissioners other than Ms. Jester, do they have a position on this or do you know? I do not know. 
Let's let's get into the bill if, okay. if we can real quick. I wanted people to get a chance to look at it for just a second. All right, Representative uh, Hanson, go ahead with uh, with your description of the bill, please. We're working off the LLC number. If you'll give that to the members of the committee, the LLC number is two eight eight seven four one. And it is a general bill, um, but due to DeKalb County being set up the way it is, it only applies to DeKalb County. Um, now, if any other county decided that they wanted to create a CEO position at some point, it would, I mean, this would prohibit that. All right, I've got to ask a legal question there because I'm not an attorney. Would that description be accurate? It currently would apply only to, but since it, the reason it's general is because in the future, any other county that wanted to operate under a CEO would fall under these guidelines? Please continue. We did very narrowly tailor um, the language to this bill to make sure that it did not eliminate any uh, county commissions that have just one county commissioner. This only applies to, as it says, the chief executive officer, um, which applies to DeKalb County. Um, it basically only eliminates that one position. It doesn't change the other structure of the county commission, um, and it. I mean, that's really all it does. And um, I brought Commissioner Jester here to kind of explain why this is so important. Um, I, as a, a simple side note, um, I spent a couple years talking um, on the Georgia gang. And every single weekend. You spoke for two years on one TV show? <laughs> well, I, I, guess, I guess paneled. <laughs> I guess paneled um, a couple of years. And every single time I was on it, we had some sort of DeKalb County issue. Um, and they all seemed to kind of stem from the, a governance issue. And so um, a number of my constituents have brought this to me as, as something they see as a problem. It's inconsistent with other more successful um, county governments. And um, just to, that's more of the 30,000 foot view. To get into the, the weeds of, of why this is, um, it just kind of leads to some um, inconsistencies and incompetencies um, in the county government. I brought Commissioner Jester to speak to that. Mr. Chairman, is now the appropriate time for Ms. Jester to, Commissioner Jester to speak to the bill? As a courtesy, Representative Hanson, since we're looking at things that could in the future affect other counties, I thought it was in the, in the best interest of fairness to get seek additional input. But you had a request to allow your guest to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that request is granted. State who you are and proceed. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nancy Jester, and I'm the commissioner for DeKalb County from District 1. Um, I'm here in support of Representative Hansen, and just to provide some more details, and if there's any questions that I can answer, um, I speak as one commissioner, so I want to be perfectly clear on that. Um, but I also agree with um, Representative Hansen's um, assessment that many of her constituents, certainly which overlap into my district, and certainly the vast majority of my district, I think would support this as well. Um, my district includes the northern arc of DeKalb, Dunwoody, Brookhaven, Shambly, Dorval, and Tucker. So I have the most heavily municipalized district in um, DeKalb County. I guess what I'll, in the, um, because time is of the essence, uh, one of the things that I'd like to draw to your attention is um, two of the, the most recent stunning issues that have been in, in the news that Ms. Hansen alluded to. Um, we are consistently in the news. Um, let's just talk about the technical issues we've had with our water sewer department. So we have two issues. Um, and they really come out of um, operational issues because of the politicization of um, the governance of the county because we have an elected person who is in charge of operations, which is a very technical job. So we are under a federal consent decree in DeKalb County for our uh, sewer spills. And in fact, we are into the sixth year of an eight-year consent decree with the federal government. And last year, 2017, we had more sewer spills than we've ever had. So we're going in the wrong direction. Why is that? Well, I think it's directly linked to the fact uh, of our form of government. And so everyone, uh, those sewer spills flow into the rivers, flow into the Chattahoochee, flow into the South River, and they damage um, other jurisdictions, other counties. They damage South Georgia, they damage the environment. Um, so, and I think this is directly linked to the turnover we see with um, 
the reestablishing of government. Every time we have a CEO, we have new folks come in. And in fact, in six years, I believe we've had five different watershed directors. Uh, in addition to that, you've probably seen on the news just yesterday, we had a huge issue with our water billing. And, and it's and the same I, thing. I don't, mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Obviously, no, there's so. internal mm -hmm. questions within sure. the county, sure. and I'm trying to mm -hmm. figure out how that affects the state. I'm sorry you've had five. Sure, sure. No, no, but, no. But we're never, well, as a committee, right. going to say an yeah. over and under here is four and then the yeah, state takes no, over. Just, That's never been our posture. So sure. I, yeah. make it relevant to the state, if you would. So uh, relevant to this bill, which um, hopefully yeah. is relevant to the state, is that I believe that there's a direct connection to that um, competency issue and the, the form of government we have. If we didn't have that form of government, I don't believe we'd have seen that. All right. Do, uh, did we have a question? Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. State your inquiry. This is a bill that was not on the agenda, that was not on the folder that is being brought at this time. Do you intend to take a vote on this in I relation to 800,000 people in DeKalb County? I do. I object to this process, Mr. Chairman. May I ask a few questions? Objection noted. You may ask questions to the present of the bill. Uh, Ms. Hanson, has this in any way been discussed among the commissioners that you were going to bring this bill to eliminate the entire government structure of DeKalb County? Um, I have not had any individual, well, any group conversations with them, no. Have, have you, you had, had any discussions with any member of the delegation that you intended to eliminate the entire form of government? Yes. Uh, who in the delegation did you discuss this with, if I may ask? Well, Scott Holcomb mm -hmm. and Tom Taylor. That, did you bring it before the uh, delegation in any manner? It's a general bill, so no. Okay. Uh, do you have any specific information about whether the other commissioners or the CEO support or oppose this bill? Respectfully, the reason it is a general bill is because this is not something that has, as you are very well aware, been successfully able to make it through our local delegation. Well, uh, this bill has not been brought to the lo local delegation. Am I right or wrong about that? The general theory has been brought to the delegation right. and failed. I, in the interest of, and I'm going to let people ask their questions, and I certainly think many of those are appropriate. It's not the posture of this committee because it's not a local bill. As we all know, cities and counties are political subdivisions of the state. Um, so I'm going to, I don't want those politics there to get into this domain to a certain extent, but I want to give great leeway if I could. Who's number 14? Moi. Moi? Yes. You're up. Thank you, sir. Um, in the testimony, you um, alluded to the fact that um, there were so many different things there. I just um, I didn't understand the issue around the environmental things that happen naturally, that how that affected the CEO formal government. Uh, but that, that to the side, um, no consultation with any members of the county uh, bothers me. So I don't, I don't understand how, how to bring this bill forward, because if we, if we are concerned about whether or not DeKalb County is going to be in the news, this puts it squarely in the middle of the news running this piece, this legislation forward. We've done some positive things to, to create the county, make the county um, even more functional. Would you not agree? Like what? Audit oversight. I'm sorry? Audit oversight. Sure. We passed through the delegation. Sure. To handle the issue that we just brought up around purchasing. I would just add that um, the audit oversight was great, and I really appreciate that. Um, and we did have um, the internal auditor that this um, body um, was um, granted us uh, do an audit of our, our watershed department and produced a report, and the administration through the elected CEO promptly ignored everything. Did not take any of those, has made that statement. It did not take any of those things into account to reform the issues that we're having with our watershed department. I'll also add to that that one of the reasons, and this is more of a, a general statement to the full committee, another reason that I particularly brought this bill is I'm a member of the Facebook group. Um, I don't, I'm going to butcher the name of it. Unbelievable DeKalb Water Issues? Bills. 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 And um, those citizens, which I believe they're like thousands, have consistently received extremely outrageous bills, have received no assistance with that have pled to um, our, our CEO for
for assistance. They even had a, a town hall yesterday. It's my understanding that they did not receive any sort of assistance or reassurance or anything like that here. That is directly linked to the CEO position is my understanding that um, you know, he hired the people. And, and this, I, wanna, I also wanna reiterate, this is not specific to the, the person who's in this position right now. I think it's an issue that there's only one county in the entire 159 counties in Georgia that I think there's a link between the fact that we're the only county, DeKalb County is the only county that has this form of government, and yet we also see this, the type of consistency in, in questionable, well, in, in ethical challenges that we've seen. And so, you know, I can't help but think that, that there's a link there. And so why don't we pass this, get to the same type of um, county governance structure that the other 158 counties or a variation that the other 158 counties have and see if it doesn't work better. Because what's happening now isn't working. All right, Representative, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask everybody kind of be specific on the answers to the questions they're asked. Does that, you have some more? Yes. Go ahead. All right, so the- I'm, I'm just gonna, because for, for the members that don't have a dog in that quote unquote fight, I'm gonna ask to make the question this long instead of go, didn't he do this and isn't he the best ever? And I'm gonna ask the same thing in the answers. Well, I mean, to your point, Mr. Chairman, this, this is a specific DeKalb County bill. I don't know how the issues that are being brought up right now affect statewide. Uh, every city in this, count, in this state operates under the same form of government. Every city? Every city. And if this is a, a county bill? If you have a mayor, it's the same thing as a CEO. Okay. No. It is. All right, well. It is. Right, you, can, you, can, you can dispute that if you want to, but I, you have an elected leader. That, now, if you have a strong form of mayor, it's the same as having a CEO form of government. All right. Did you have any other questions for the presenter of the bill? I'll let others answer. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Number 16, Representative Wynn. Thank you. Is this your first question you've asked her in committee? I think so. Congratulations. Thank you. Be easy on them. <laughs> um, is there a reason why we only have, we're only hearing from one commissioner? I mean, there are seven commissioners and there are multiple districts in DeKalb and this impacts all of our districts, not just your constituents. So I would think having a transparent process where there is more input from people who are going to be governing whether or not there is a CEO is important. Um, I did just talk to Nancy. Um, but it was one of the one of the parts of our discussion was that the current um, county commission is working very very well together now that being said that kind of gets back to the whole this is not personal this is not just about you know who's there now it's looking forward and making sure that our our county is set up for the best possible governance structure for it to be successful and again, it goes back to what has not been working versus what's working in other counties. Okay, what was the question? How many did you talk to? What's mm -hmm. the answer? How many did you talk to? Nancy. Thank you. Other question? No. And again, I'm just trying to. <laughs> sure. Number 17, who we got there? Right here, Representative, Representative Shannon. Shannon. Yep. So the conversation has been pretty vague. Um, so I'd like for you to get down to the specifics about what you feel have been the missteps of the CEOs over the various years. If you could just publicly give us some specific examples, because I'm not understanding how environmental um, issues are directly related to missteps. Just say the missteps since you're putting it out for everyone. Sure. So I'm going to let Nancy get into the weeds about that because she deals with it on a more day-to-day -day basis. And I'm going to ask you to mention them numerically or in alphabetical order and not get into the specifics where we get a debate back and forth on the effectiveness of each one of them that you're getting in the weeds about. Well, I'll just um, just leave you with, with um, one. To, to, that, that's good. So um, again, six years into an eight-year consent decree. I'm, I'm a I mean, I'm going to say two. Six years into uh, a, a, an eight-year consent decree with more sewer spills now than when we started the consent decree, so we're going backwards. Uh, we're at serious risk of having a sewer moratorium put on DeKalb County from the EPA. That is directly linked to our form of government. We can, I can tell you offline exactly that, you know, go into the details of that. Uh, so um, also, um, right now, as we speak, DeKalb County can't, can't issue a sewer capacity letter to any developer in DeKalb County right now. So in fact, if Amazon were to say they wanted to locate at the GM site, they couldn't hook up to our sewer system because we can't give them sewer capacity. And that's true throughout the county, the entire county. 
Can I ask another question? Yeah, absolutely. That didn't really specifically answer what I was asking. What I was asking is, what are the, mis the specific missteps? I understand the challenges, but what are the missteps that you feel like the, the CEOs have specifically done? It, let, me, let me step in real quick. It's not necessarily that there are missteps, although I think the news pretty much covers that. It's the fact that every time we elect a new CEO, they bring in their people, and so there's a lapse in you know, people having to get re-caught up. They're are you know people saying oh well I used to have this person working here so I'm gonna bring them back and then they've, they've got their way of doing things and then the people below them don't agree with that and then there's all this tension it, it's as she said it earlier the politicization of this position and then they bring their people I mean it is it right that's there's a constant churn of um, people so you have no consistent um, people in government, unlike the folks that are under a county manager system, where you see a lot of changes can happen in the county, but you've got that consistent managerial level at the technical professional level in county government. Well, that's the same for almost every elected position, even with Is new mayors question? when they come in. You were kind enough to ask if you got an additional question? Yeah, my question okay. would be, how is that different from electing a new mayor who brings in their own folks and there's a new administration that has a different way of doing things? I mean, how is that different from many of the elected positions that we have? So we, we know that in some cities that has happened. Atlanta, in fact, was under a federal consent decree for exactly the same thing, sewer overflows. But in strong, um, in other uh, cities like, say, the cities that have formed the, mis mis the municipal movement in North DeKalb, they have a, not a strong mayor system. So they're unable to do that. And so you have the consistency of a city manager there over time as well. Representative 18, Collins. You have a question, sir? I do have Please. a question. Uh, you're specific that DeKalb County is the only county set up in the state to operate this way. I think some of the confusion that I'm hearing is city government and county government are not the same. Correct. Is, is that what I'm hearing? And, and that in most county governments throughout the state, if you have a chairman, or chairwoman, you have a professional administrator who comes in and, and runs the operations of the county. That, that's what I'm understanding. Is that correct? And you feel like that some of the things that are going on or, or, or not being done as professionally as you would like them to be done is because you have all of the power vested in the CEO of the county. Is that right? Correct. Is, is that what I'm understanding? That's my opinion. Okay. Yes. All right, other questions from members of the committee? Representative Price. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if this were to go forward, my question is, or actually currently, is there a chairman of the county commission? Um, if I may, so we operate by electing our own presiding officer within the uh, commission, and this year um, we, the seven of us, have elected um, Kathy, uh, excuse me, uh, Jeff Rader from District 2 as our presiding officer, and we have a deputy presiding officer as well. So if this were to go into effect, you'd have to rewrite your, a charter or bylaws or what exactly would have to happen? Well, it, as long as it would go forward with a county commission, um, then the county commission would hire a county manager, I would assume, but I'd leave that to... Um, well, Representative would decide that. Or we would, we decide, would that. decide that. Representative Oliver. I'd like to answer that question. I think it would put the government out of business. I mean, this is a, a July 1st, and since we wouldn't have a session to recreate a charter, is it your, let me ask it this way, is it your intent okay. that the CEO government be absolved, totally disappear July 1st, 2018, if this bill passed? Is well, that your intent? Let me first clarify, this, this would not eliminate the position as of July 1st, 2018. It specifically says that it would be in existence until the end of the term of office, which the current chief executive officer is in office um, as of July 1, 2018. So there would actually be another couple of years after that. Um, so basically 2020. The CEO would be there until like 2020. Do, I, I'm gonna, I, just for the chairman's, Representative Oliver, the when you read the bill, do you read it that way? Yeah, on that's the a benefit of having a bill on an agenda and having a bill in a folder that you might be able to have a chance to read it. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that this House Bill 961 lay on the table. All right. We're not quite ready for the motion. Any other questions? Representative Brockway. Yeah. 
Mr. Chairman, I, um, you know, I've lived in Atlanta a long time. I've, I've, I've seen Representative uh, Hanson on the TV, uh, and I've heard lots and lots of discussion about DeKalb County's government. And if I may make a, a suggestion that may, may be well received, it may not be well received, but this is a huge change in the, in the form of government in DeKalb County. Would it be better uh, to, to study this, to form a study committee of some sort to take a look at the implications of this sort of thing? Uh, and I know folks in DeKalb have heard, uh, you know, there's been studies that recommend this, that, and the other for, for years and years, but we are being asked here, if I may say so, very quickly to decide to uh, remove a very prominent and powerful politician in the city of Atlanta, in, in this Atlanta region, uh, here very quickly. And I, you know, yeah. I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't live in De De DeKalb County, um, but I, if I could just throw that out there for, for discussion, for the committee's consideration. Yes, and you can chair that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, Secretary, I, I'm just uh, having fun with that one. Um, Kevin uh, Representative Price. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to clarify, when is the next meeting of this body? That's a work in progress. Um, we're looking at something potentially Tuesday. Um, and I know that there's some um, people that want to have a further discussion on this. Let's just make sure we all, and I know we do, understand the legislative process. And that is you do pass both bodies. We are looking at some crossover kind of things. And, I, and, I, and I, it's usually not the style of this committee, but we've had to do some movement late. So I'm going to ask for a spirit of cooperation. And at this time, uh, I'll represent, I'll ask Representative Oliver for her motion. Motion, lay the 961 on the table. All right, we've got a motion to lay 961 on the table. Rep I'm sorry, and I've got a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. No's no clearly had it. I'll entertain another motion. Move do pass, sir. Got a motion do pass. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? No. Ayes clearly have it. Please, you will be getting a notice as it relates to Tuesday, and we don't know when, where, what, how or why, but uh, we anticipate some bills. Thank you.